everyone, and welcome back to So Biased. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you wait. I'm not going anywhere. And part of the reason it's looking like Christmas is because of the Home for the Holidays Challenge. This is a group of Cosetubers who are doing projects. This is for the many holidays that take place around the winter solstice time because there is more than just Christmas. As a 1940s nerd, I was sitting there thinking, what could I possibly do for Christmas? What could be Christmassy that's 1940s? And then I start looking up Christmas movies that were made in the 1940s, and it is basically all of them. Everything from It's a Wonderful Life to White Christmas to a lot of the versions of The Christmas Carol, but so many of the great classics that we know and love were made in the 1940s. So I had a ton of inspiration. I thought of doing some of the white Christmas dresses, but oh, no, you girls broke. So <laughs> the budget, take a look at these costumes. Look at how beautiful and elaborate and no, I just know <laughs> the money and the time to make these beautiful gowns. Oh, but then it occurred to me, it's a wonderful life. The classic Christmas movie that everyone has seen a million times, partially because the studio forgot to renew the copyright on the movie, so it was actually accidentally lapsed into the public domain for a while, so a whole bunch of people just broadcast it because they're like, I don't have to pay rights on this. Copyright law, it's a weird thing. So there's lots of iconic looks in this movie. Uh, the one that a lot of people know is the blue floofy dress that Donna Reed's character wears in the flashbacks. And I am not a poofy, fluff, ruffly kind of person. So it was very much not my style, but the black dress in the opening and the finale, that's me. You know, I can't say no to a VNAC. I found a lot of stills from the movie and tried to figure out exactly what this pattern was, how it was constructed. I'm pretty much certain it's made of black velvet because it does not reflect any light, which means I found zero on the construction. No matter how closely you look, you're not gonna see where the seam lines are, how it was built, pff, nothing. There is nothing on this. So I'm like, well, I get a free pass now to make it however I like. Um, I noticed the shoulders were very, very boxy, which is a very 40s style. They love this kind of square, severe square shoulder with often with padding, very 1980s as well. It has a kind of a modified V-neck, so it goes out and then in again, and this beautiful lace around the collar. If you look in a few of the stills, when she turns, there's a bit of a swish to the dress. So it's not a perfect A-line, there's a bit of movement, so the skirt is a little bit fuller than a standard A-line. I went online and I found this amazing pattern from Wearing History. I am not sponsored by them, by the way. But if you wanna sponsor me, like, message me below, I'm here for you. So Wearing History features a lot of vintage patterns and a lot of downloadable patterns, which is really nice. So the pattern that I got from them is called the Victory Dress Pattern, which is a very common 1940s theme is the V for Victory because World War II. So the Victory Dress is a pattern from 1939. This movie was made in 1946, so I figured some of the lines would be pretty similar, and it had that same kind of v-neck and a slightly swooshier A-line skirt to it. So I downloaded the pattern for that, and I made a couple modifications, mostly just to the neckline, uh, because this one has, uh, the pattern I bought has a shallower V, so I cut it out a bit bigger and in that weird kind of elongated v-neck thing. Donna Reed's character, uh, Mary Hatch, in the movie also wears an apron with this dress, and I'm gonna make the apron as well. In this, there is a ton of lace. Oh my God, I had no idea what I was signing up for. There's this really beautiful edging lace on the apron, and there's also the lace around the collar. And I've seen a few reproductions of this, and I no one ever seems to get the lace right. So it, I really, really wanted to do a good job on the lace. If you look really closely, as I've done a lot, the lace is this Venetian lace, and there's, in my research, something like 50 different styles of lace, like various ways of making lace. Venetian lace is made obviously in Venice on one of the little islands called Burano, not to be confused with the glass making island of Murano, 
but Burana was known for lace making. It is still there and they still make lace there if you want to go. So this is Venetian lace and I went online and I looked, oh my god, for five hours <laughs> to try to find the right lace pattern. And I'll link down below where I found what I think is pretty similar and it's a Venetian lace applique but in the original dress there is also this edging so I got another lace that had that edging in it and I kind of franken laced them together um, as well as I found a really beautiful edging lace for the apron and I attached that on there so for the dress I chose a black cotton velvet I've never worked with cotton velvet before but I hate stretch velvet it is so slippery, it is so floofy, it is so unforgiving, and the nap is all over the place. So my fellow costumers recommended cotton velvet, which I tried and like much better. Way less stretch, way less slippery, um, still the floofies. What are you gonna know? Um, <laughs> there are floofies everywhere in my house. So black cotton velvet for the dress and then white cotton for the apron and then all the lace edging. And anyway, let's get sewing. Package is here. This is, I don't know what this is. This is something from Ontario. Okay, let's get it open. Oh my God. It is the apron lace. Oh my God. Okay, this is really cute. So this is the edging lace for the apron. And isn't that gorgeous? And hi, did you need attention? Yeah? Am I, am I not paying you enough attention? <laughs> it's not quite the perfect place, but finding a wide edging lace like this is really hard. So I found the closest match I could and bought that. And oh, this is so beautiful. So this is going to be the edge of the apron. For this apron, this might legit be the easiest thing I've ever sewn. I just cut out a rectangle out of plain white cotton. Um, the apron goes to about mid thigh including the lace and the lace is like four inches wide so I cut it a little shorter on the sides um, and it doesn't wrap around it just kind of sits at her sides so I left the space for the lace there and then there's a plain waist belt so I just cut out a uh, about four inch strip of the same cotton which I'm going to fold in half and sew down Oops. so I'm gonna fold this in half I'm gonna sew along here they're gonna turn it inside out and same thing um, I'm gonna sew this around all the edges it's literally just a plain rectangle which is great and I'm gonna leave a small little opening to turn it inside out and then I'll just close that by hand so this is gonna be the majority of the apron so let's just quickly stitch these guys together we now have a rectangle and so it's sewn on all four sides turned inside out and pressed and next up is going to be the lace so the lace is gonna go on three of the four sides and it sticks out quite a lot. So I'm going to do, attach it right here, you can see. And then I'm gonna do a straight stitch along this edge and then do a zigzag to enclose this edge. And I'm gonna do it all the way down. And then on the original garment, there's just a 45 degree angle at the bottom. So I'm gonna cut that off, go across and then up again. And then the waistband attaches including the lace up across the top. So I'm gonna do that last. So I'm gonna cut out all the lace, make sure it's all beautiful and perfect, and then straight stitch down this little channel here, and then zigzag across this in the white so it will all hold on nice and firmly. But isn't it pretty? I really like it. Okay, that's the front of the apron done. Uh, all the lace is sewn down nicely, and then, I'm gonna take the waist belt, I'm gonna find the middle and line it up with the middle of this, and then just sew it on down the front and finish off the edges. Turn these inside, we'll cut them straight, turn them inside, and then top stitch them down. And then we will have an apron. Um, I purchased this pattern from Wearing History. They have an amazing array of digital patterns, and this is the Victory Dress sewing pattern. Um, and they have it available from bust sizes 30 to 46. So yay wearing history, that is great. So I'm gonna lay all of this out. Um, this pattern has a couple different styles, a short sleeve and a long sleeve. I'm obviously doing the long sleeve with the straight shoulders. 
and it has a v-neck but I am going to make that a little shorter so I can alter the neckline once I get the lace. So I'm going to lay this down, we are going to cut out all the pattern pieces and get started on the dress. Okay, step one for the bodice, we have the center front. Um, I actually screwed up. This is supposed to be cut on the fold and I kind of didn't, so I just sewed it down the center. So ignore that, don't, don't do that. And then we have the two side bodice pieces and this piece just kind of pops right down the middle here, which is really neat. And I went with the pattern for the V-neck because it's a very, very shallow uh, v, so if I need to make it wider, uh, later once I have the lace I can do that. Um, then there are gathering threads at the top here and as well at, at the bottom of each of the bodice pieces. So those are sewn into place and then it is gathered at the top and at the bottom and then it is sewn into here to fit because these are gathered small enough so that they fit in this space. So I'm going to gather that up, I'm going to pin it into place, and then I'm going to sew the center front to the sides. Next up is the skirt. So we sew, uh, this is the skirt front, it's just two panels in the front, two panels in the back, so we're going to sew down the front center seam, and I'm pretty sure I accidentally sew, or accidentally cut the back skirt on a fold so I don't think I need to do the center seam on that one. Then it is sewing the front to the back and you leave a small opening on the left hand side. I assume that's for the actual closure so we'll find out. So the next step is sewing the sides of the sleeves together and then setting the sleeves into the arm side which oh, hopefully this will be okay. okay. So this is the first fitting of the dress and I'm really liking it so far. It definitely needs to come in a little bit at the waist here and probably in the, whoop, in the bust. Uh, the sleeves, the sleeves fit really well, but in the movie they're very, very fitted, so I might take them in just a little bit. There's also shoulder pads that you can put in here and I might use them. I have big shoulders though, so I'm kind of debating. And I will probably take the neckline down once I have the lace in, just so I can check, but I'm gonna wait for that. Uh, the hem is, it's quite long. There's supposed to be a two and a half inch hem, so I am going to turn that up, and that will probably be the right length, and there's a lot of nice swish to the skirt. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, time for some tailoring. Tailoring is done. There's a side closure here that I haven't put in yet because still fitting. And the fit is much better. I took about an inch off of both sides and I took about the same amount off of the sleeves and they fit a lot better. And the shoulders are really nice and almost square. So I don't know if I'm gonna do the shoulder pads, but schmack. And then we're gonna do a side closure. You cannot see any of the details because it's velvet. So. I am going to now hem the sleeves, I'm going to hem the hem, and next up is the lace. Lace number two arrived and I am super excited. Okay, so this is the collar lace, you can see it has all the pretty flowers and leaves and stuff. So this is going to go along the collar and I have one more type of lace arriving that has a little edging on it and I am going to use both to make a Franken lace that will work for everything. Oh, look how pretty that is. Some days a bad fan belt outside. And for the collar itself, it called for a simple binding. So I just did a simple two inch binding strip, sewed it onto the front, and then hand stitch it, slip stitched it onto the inside to lay it in place. And I would normally press it flat, but velvet. Okay, this dress has a side closure. So this is the 
yeah this is the right hip and it has this opening from the waist over the hip the pattern allows you to do snaps or a zipper but because this is velvet and a little stretchy i opted for the zipper and just did a little short zipper from the waist down to a bit of the hip i need to just finish off that zipper nicely at the top and the bottom and i have started the ridiculously tedious process let's play count the pins of pinning the lace to the collar and so this is part one of the franken lace and then i am going to have to hand sew all of this oh boy this should hopefully be the edging lace. Let's see. I definitely need this scalloped edge for the inside. Lace surgery happening and then a whole ton of hand sewing. The edging is going to go on the inside here to finish off the color piece. Okay, surgery is complete. We have the scalloped edge. We have it pinned down. I have used pretty much every pin I own to pin this down. And now I am going to be hand sewing forever. The hand sewing is pretty much done. So, okay, so don't ignore. Actually, someone on CauseTube told me that if you do big ugly stitches with your lace, it is completely historically accurate because they were not dainty and pretty in their appliques. So I am not being lazy, I am being historically accurate. So this is the lace. This border lace is a very, very slightly off-white, but I don't think you can tell. I think we should try it. Mina, what do you think? Should we try it on? <gasps> okay, let's do it. Nope, I am a liar. Lace is not finished. I went back and had a look at the stills from the show and it seems like the lace does not have any of this space between the edging and the flowers. It's attached really, really close. So I'm going to crack out my emergency backup lace. Thank you, Nancy. And I am going to do some trimming, probably like this edge right here, to fill in the gaps. And I am going to pop it into this space here, fill all that in, and then do another line of sewing. I think Mina agrees. Or doesn't care, because she's a dog. Flump. <laughs> okay. So, more lace butchery to come. More lace. It's never ending. So I've been adding a bunch more little bits. It actually kind of matches nicely. That surprises me because they're totally different. I bought one of them from Holland and one of them I got from Dresso in Vancouver. Dresso, if you're in Vancouver, go shop there. So I've just been cutting out little bits and pinning them in and I'll tack them underneath the lace so that we get this nice solid pattern that touches the edging really nicely. Once it's done, it should look really nice. I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. Yay. Another eternity of hand stitching. Let's, okay, I could, I got this. It's almost done. Dress is finished. I'm going to do a little pressing because, huh, and clean off all of the black velvet fluffies, which are now everywhere. Mina, Mina, what do you think? Do you like it? Do we get the Mina seal of approval? Hi, hi. Girl. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas. 
So that is it for the It's a Wonderful Life dress. As you can see, it turned out really cute. It's very comfy. One note on the pattern is if you make this out of velvet, this type of velvet is quite sticky. It likes to stick to itself quite a lot and it's not as slippery as a stretch velvet. So getting it off is a thing because you just have that opening on the side. If you're like me and have a wide chest, you're gonna be sitting there awkwardly pulling it over your head. I did not get stuck in the dress twice. I, I really enjoyed making this pattern. I also really enjoyed the wearing history instructions because they updated all the instructions. So it's like, here's all the steps, not just go figure the thing out. You'll be fine. So big thumbs up to wearing history for this pattern. I will be shopping with you again. So this is my contribution to the home for the holidays challenge. If you want to go see other costumers contribution to this challenge, I will create a playlist down below and there is the main playlist for hashtag home for the holidays. Please go check it out. Check out all the other costumers. There's some amazing projects. As for my next projects, I'm still working on some videos for the 1940s capsule wardrobe and I'm trying to figure out some projects for the new year. So if you have any suggestions or ideas, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Please hit the notification bell so that you can get notifications every time I upload. Please leave me a comment if you liked what I was doing, if you have questions, if you're working on something else, please let me know if you have your own projects going on. Would love to hear from you. Everyone in the comments has been so delightful. I love hearing from you, so please leave a comment or leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I don't know if I'll be uploading next week just because my normal Thursday upload date is Christmas Eve, so I might actually do Christmas things. So if I don't see you before Christmas time, have a Merry Christmas. If you're currently celebrating Hanukkah, I hope you have a wonderful Hanukkah. For all my pagan friends, have a great Yule, have a great solstice, enjoy whatever holiday you are celebrating. And as always, hope you stay happy and healthy. Please take care of each other and I'll see you all next time. Bye. If you make this out of velvet, oh, I need to stop shaking the damn table. Oh, and then sneeze. It's not COVID, I swear. I should actually look up what her character's name is. I for keep forgetting. Why do I not? Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. That's all I remember. Meh. Donna Reed's character in It's a Wonderful Life. This is going on the outtakes. Fictional characters frequently Mary mentioned Hatch. on the web include yeah. George Bailey, Mary Hatch, Mr. Potter, and yeah, yeah, yeah.